So I want to talk to you about what actually happens when a new singer comes to me for help. How does it look like? What happens behind the doors? It could be group lessons because they signed up for one of my courses that have group lessons as part of it, or it could be one-on-one. -on -one. And the thing is, no matter if they meet me one-on-one -on -one or in a group the first time, it's always online. I assume we talk about online coaching. Everybody's absolutely terrified the first time they meet me and they have to sing for me. And it's probably two reasons for that. And one is that they have seen all my social media and they have seen the link to Maria Callas, Elvira de Hidalgo, and they are intimidated by that. But it's also the fact that they have spent so much time and so much money on failed training before. So they are worried that this might just be another failed attempt. And I'm acutely aware of that. And of course, before they can even start thinking about singing, I need to find a way to calm them down. So I talk with them. I ask them a little bit about themselves, their lives, their ambitions, their family, but in a very casual way. Of course, within those first minutes, I already know a lot about them. And I'm starting to already have a picture if this is a person who have the right attitudes, the right mindset, what it actually takes to go far. Because there is so much more to becoming a great singer than just the voice. And of course, the biggest challenge in all of this is that they have pretty much 99.99% .99 of the time been trained for 5, 10, 15 years without really learning any foundational crucial skills. So they've been trained in a way where they have been working on arias or songs that they should have never touched because they don't have the foundational skills. There is no method to all the training they've had before. And I see that as a huge problem. That has been a huge shock for me because I was so lucky. I only had one singing teacher. I found the right one. I was hell hunting until I found the right one. And she trained me six days a week for more than five years. So I learned a specific method that is not written down in stone. And it's interesting because there are so many books about singing and there's so many books about painting, but I haven't seen a book, maybe there is, and I haven't found it, but you know, Michelangelo saying this and this is, this is exactly how you mix the colors and this is how you paint the way I do. And it's the same with Belcanto. There are some brilliant books written back in the old days with exercises that are gonna help you with your training, but there isn't any book saying, this is exactly how we do the breathing. This is exactly how we do this and this. There are a couple of books that come close to that, but there isn't one saying, this is the method, this is what we are doing, all of us. Because the majority of the training is from a maestra or maestro to the student, and then you pass that on to the next student. It's really important to always keep in mind that the person sitting in front of me at the other end of the Zoom call or Skype call or whatever we are using is in a very vulnerable situation. If they have spent years of training without getting good results, they have started to doubt themselves. They have started to think that I don't have the talent. There's something wrong with my voice. Several of them have started to think that they must be stupid. And that has never been the case. They are always very passionate, intelligent people who have talent. The problem is that they haven't learned a proper method and the absence of a proper method, a proper system, a proven system with great results has left them very frustrated and very insecure. So not only do they come to me when they are pretty much desperate because they are, have started to doubt their talent, also their self-confidence has taken a huge hit. So I always look at all of this because when you are a singer, just like me here, all of this is the instrument case. Your voice is not something you can put away like a piano or a guitar. You are the instrument. It's not only your voice, you are the instrument. When I was skipping 200 times with my skipping rope this morning, that might affect how I sing if I sing 10 minutes later. For me, that will actually be good because if I'm physically active just before I sing, my body is warmed up, I will sing better. What I eat will affect how I sing. What kind of relationship I am in with all the people closest to me in my, and there will be so many factors that are affecting how that person is going to progress or develop as we go along with the training. That's why it's so important to actually talk with them and talk with them the right way, not just, so what do you want to sing then? What have you sung before? 
And I really don't ask them what they have been singing before or how much training they had before, because if they are new to Belcanto, they are beginners to me. Just like the great Mathilde Marchesi said more than a hundred years ago, she is probably the greatest Belcanto teacher ever. She didn't care if they had been trained for 10 years, if they were new to Belcanto. And I have always had the same approach. So I don't ask them about that. I ask them about what their goals are, how their situation is. Are they living with their parents? Are they living alone? Are they married? Do they have kids? Do they have a full-time job, a part-time job? Do they have a job where they actually have to speak a lot? How is their health? How is their fitness? What's their lifestyle? But I don't ask that sitting with a piece of paper like this, you know. I'm, I'm not sitting like this, ticking all the boxes. No, I don't. But I have all of those things in mind. And so far I have been able to remember it. Sometimes I take a bit of notes afterwards. If there is something that I see, this is so crucial, they just told me something that's really crucial for me to remember. But I get a good picture of who they are. And this is important because everything you do in your life, everything you eat, everything you drink, everything you think is going to affect how you sing. And then I tell them there's no reason. I tell them flat out, that's one of the first thing I say. I can see that you are terrified of me, right? You're really nervous about singing for me. But I'm the last person you should be nervous for because I've heard all kinds of crap singing before. And there's nothing you can do here today that is going to be worse than what I've heard before or what I have done before. So you can just become. I'm the last person you should be afraid of. And during those few minutes of talk, they calm down and they can start singing. They are still a bit nervous, but nowhere near as nervous as they were in the beginning. Then it's time to sing and they stand up and they, you know, I tell them have good posture, take a deep breath. And I show them, I always show them the vocalizers so they get to hear that I can actually sing. I don't just play it on the piano, I sing it for them. And then I hear right away that this person have no breath support. I've yet to hear anyone who had that despite their bachelor's or master's or being professors at universities teaching singing. They hadn't learned to breathe the correct way, the Belcanto way. And then I asked them, so do you perceive that you have any problem with the breathing? And they become very insecure because, very confused because they realize I'm asking this question for a reason. I told you, my clients or my singers are always smart. And they were like, why are you asking that? Is there something wrong with my breathing? And I said, yes, you're doing it completely wrong, but it's not your fault. And then I show them exactly what they are doing. I'm saying, you're expanding here and here. You shouldn't do that. And you don't give your voice support by doing this and this. And this is causing tension here and you're wasting breath. And then I go into a really detailed explanation for how the breath support should work. I explain to them. And then I show them. And then I ask them to do it. And they have their first light bulb moments. For the first time they get to experience that they can sing a vocalize very easy with less effort and that's usually very shocking and very very exciting for them so after realizing that they actually don't know how to breathe i have to show them some breathing exercises so they can do some of those like i had to do for a few minutes at the beginning of each of my singing lessons the first months and then i asked them to sing some vocalizes with ama and that is always a huge shock as well. And then it's time for vocalize on A and R, which is a huge shock as well. Because I asked them after they have sung some A's and some R's on some notes. So did you hear any breath? And they say, no, I don't hear any breath. A few times singers will admit that they hear breath, but usually they don't. And it's because they haven't been trained. Their ears haven't been trained properly. Especially if they have been trained by singing teachers who play piano all the time. All they actually focus on is starting to, or trying to keep up with the piano. They haven't had their ears trained. This is something that old school Belcanto teachers always warn about. You need to train your ear. And if you haven't, you won't hear that you're wasting breath. And then I make them aware of the fact that they are wasting a ton of breath. And once they hear that and they realize what they have to listen for, they get really horrified. Oh, I've been doing this all the time. I didn't know that. And then my next question is, did you notice where your voice was on A and if there was any change where the voice is on A? Do it again, please. And then they sing the A and the A. And you can see in their eyes that the brain is working over time trying to think about, oh, the breathing. Okay, A and A. What's happening here? Am I wasting breath? 
where is the voice? <laughs> and it sounds so easy, but this is a very brutal wake-up call. And then they realize, wait a minute, something happens. The A is not where the A is. The A is in the throat. Why is it in the throat? The A is not there. And then I look at them and I'm telling them, okay, so now you have actually taken the first step to learning to understand all the different elements of your voice. This is something you should have learned years ago, but we are starting today is the first day because you need to know exactly what your breath is doing, the breath distribution, and you can only focus on that the first weeks because if you try it like you did now to focus on many things, you forget about the breath and it will never work at 100% capacity. It will maybe be 10, 20, 30%. So the rule is, we all agree on that. All real the Kanto teachers agree on that has always been the case. You have to learn one skill at a time and your only focus now is breathing. 10 minutes a day. But you know now a little bit, a tiny bit of where we want to go when it comes to not wasting breath when you sing the vowels. You have only tried two and that they need to be placed on one line and you have discovered that your eye is completely wrong. So you have already learned a lot of things. And they get really excited because they start to see that there is a system, there is a method. And of course, they want to learn as much as possible right away. And then the challenge is to hold them back. And that's the biggest challenge when you create a course like I've done, like my big vocal excellence course, where you get access to all of the skills right away. But if you do everything at the same time, nothing is going to be good. So I'm urging the singers all the time. You have to learn this, you have to focus on this, and then focus on this and this and this and this. And most of them actually are so serious that they follow my advice. It's been a couple who have tried to jump straight into going from one to 10 and then sing difficult things that doesn't work. And then I have to tell them, hey, that's not the purpose here because you're wasting time. You need to learn the foundations first. So this is when it comes to the singing itself, that's how we do it. And no matter if they sing heavy metal, rock, jazz, pop, opera. The method is the same and for all voice types. The method is the same. The system is the same. Some singers will have more progress in one area, one skill quicker than others. And then they might be slower in something else. And it's just like with kids. I have four kids. They all had to learn to, you know, push themselves up when they were lying on the tummy with the arms. Then they could roll over. Then they could sit up. They could crawl, they could stand, they could run. And it's the same with singers, but it's different with what speed they're doing the different steps, but they have to go through the same steps. But in the middle of all this, parallel to the technique, is the mindset training, the self-confidence training. And I'm super focused on the confidence building, the mindset, because when they already have lost a bit of their self-confidence because of years of failed training and maybe some bad experiences in concert. That's one thing, but also they might have confidence issues from previous experiences in life, like I had. I had a very difficult childhood. And I want singers who are trained by me, whether they have my courses and never meet me in person, or if I coach them in groups of one-on-one -on -one to be confident. So this is something I've spent a lot of time on. I've been using sports psychology methods for years. So I want singers to walk on stage or into a recording studio and not only be technically really good, but also be happy and confident because I have worked with singers who, or artists who delivered on the highest possible level, but they were terrified. It was no pleasure for them. They actually felt physically sick because of stage fright. And that's not a good situation. And my definition of coaching is not that I just tell people do this and this and this. I'm trying to unravel all the blocks, all the obstacles that are in the way of that person to become great, because everybody can become a really good singer. But you have to find out what's stopping that person. Okay, the technique is one thing. It's a big job to actually get rid of the old habits. And for me then to detect what are they doing and why are they doing it? Okay, this is what they did. Now let us focus on how they can do it right. Because if they have been singing badly for years, the brain is really, really cemented into that way of singing. But then, that's why I always say, if you focus on singing new vocalizers that you learn from me and new songs that you will learn from me, 
you will do that right. But if you then try to go home and sing something you have sang in a bad way for 10 years, your brain will automatically fall back to the bad way of singing it. That's why it's smart to wait with singing the songs you have been singing badly for years. Does that make sense to you? Because we want to speed this up as much as it is humanly possible. And the brain and the body and everything needs time. But I start parallel with the singing. I do the mindset and confidence training. And sometimes it's specific exercises if I see that they actually need that. Other times it's just the way I'm coaching. That I make sure that I give them tasks and goals that are always achievable. I never push a singer outside their vocal range when it comes to being confident. I never push them to try to see if they can go higher or deeper. Because I can heal right away where the limits are. And then when they have done the breathing exercises 10 minutes a day, I can hear if they do them or not. And they, like my teacher could with me. And when they do those very targeted vocalizers that have a purpose, what happens is sometimes after a month, usually after two or three months, they start adding several notes to their vocal range by default because they have the right technique. And then they are really excited. But parallel to that, is the confidence building. And as I said, I do this also by giving them achievable goals, not tell them to try to sing things they're not ready to sing. Because if your teacher tells you, you know, ask you what you want to sing, and you come in and you say, I want to sing Phantom of the Opera. And I've had singers who had tried to do that and they had no breath support. They will feel like a loser. It's really bad for a confidence. Instead, I ask them to sing vocalizers. And they master that and they feel happy. I ask them to sing songs from Bakai. And they master that and they feel happy. And they feel like they are mastering something, a new skill, a new task. And that's a victory and that helps the self-confidence. And gradually we are building the technical skills and the self-confidence. And I will tell you, singers are very often confused by the fact that everything in your life is going to affect how you sing. That's why I created my bundled course with 25 mini courses. Some of them are just a video, others are eight videos but it's a bundle with all of the things that will actually affect how you're singing and how you can handle all of that. I call that my singer success kit. It's like 25 mini courses for 45 pounds. I could easily sell that for a high price, but there are all of these things that I know singers are confused about, that they need to have in place if they want to perform on a high level. And one example is this. I have this talented singer in Switzerland and I told her about the routine I have, the three things I have to do if I want to sing really well just before I sing. The last couple of hours before I sing, there are certain things I do. And I told her that and she tried to do the same and she was so happy we were gonna have a singing lesson at eight o'clock in the morning because she has a very busy career. So we agreed at eight o'clock in the morning on Wednesdays, that's a really good time for her and me to have a lesson. And she had been up since five o'clock in the morning, both she and I, we get up really early and we were gonna have a lesson and she couldn't do anything. And she said, I don't understand it, but I cannot make anything work. I did everything right today. And I asked her, so what did you do yesterday? And she was telling me she had this face massage for the first time, really deep tissue massage all over her face. So all her muscles here were aching like crazy. She was in so much pain and everything felt stiff. And I just looked at her and said, there you have it. This is why you're not singing today. Because you cannot have this the day before you're singing because you're going to be in so much pain and everything is going to be stiff and you know you need to relax. And we laughed about it because these are the things that singers don't really think about. Another person might have been out running the marathon the day before and wondering why they don't have a voice today. Or they were eating really spicy food and they have a sore throat. There are so many things that affect how you sing. So I don't tell anyone what you have to do. I'm just telling them that what is my experience? What are the experiences of the other singers? This might be smart to keep an eye on. And very interesting, even if they don't sing classical music in the first place, they sing heavy metal or jazz or pop, acoustic music, they fall in love with the fact that they can actually sing classical and many start to do that as well. But this is a little bit how it works. This whole thing about being coached online, I was very much against it in the beginning. But then some of my daughter's fans started to ask me for singing lessons many, many years ago on Skype, long before Zoom, long before Instagram or anything like that. And I gave them lessons on Skype and it worked really well. And then I continued to coach more singers on Skype. And then eventually 
in 2021, my daughter finally convinced me, she had tried for a year, I created my first course and that took me months. And I didn't really want to do it because I didn't think that it was possible to actually learn the Belcanto technique in a course. I thought they had to have access to me at all times because that's the way I was trained. But then I realized that this is not the case. And I spent, I said, I'm going to spend a week and I'm going to film that I coach my daughter and my son. One was a beginner, one was, is already a famous artist. I'm going to just film when I coach you and then I'm going to just put together some videos and that's going to be the course. But it's not like that, you know, <laughs> I'm a perfectionist and I really want to help people. And as I was filming, I always came up with something new. I always came up with something more I wanted to teach singers. I put together the modules. I had everything on post-its and it was like the whole world full of post-its. And then I reshot all the videos, I think three, four, five times. And I was building out and building out. And eventually what I thought would be 10 videos was 66 videos. And PDFs, lots of PDFs. It took me three months to create that. But then I was really happy because I knew that I've just given it all. And my way was always to explain something difficult in a very easy way, to make it easy, to make it achievable. So this lesson will be good for the singer and create some PDFs to help with that. And then to never try to overwhelm them, but just make it fun as well. I'm showing singers, you know, in my courses sometimes how you do it if you sing it wrong. And I sing badly on purpose. And I have lots of self-irony because you have to have that as well. So, but that, that's, that was my approach to creating courses. Since then I've created many courses. I've created courses for public speakers. I have my vocal excellence is a complete training for singers. And then my most popular course, of course, is the breathing course, the master your breath, master your performance, which is saving singers tons of, ton, tens of thousands of dollars. They're learning to breathe, which is the most important skill for hardly anything. So all of this has been very exciting for me. And it's always a, thing in development to this day. I'm still adding videos and PDFs to some of my courses. And I think the most, the thing I've been most proud about was that in 2023, I desperately wanted to help more singers who couldn't afford or didn't want to have my biggest, most expensive courses that, you know, you pay a couple of thousand dollars for. It's still very cheap compared to that. I pay $200,000 for my training. Yeah, true story. It's expensive, something I very much appreciated since I came from poverty. So I turned my life around. I know what it takes. So, but uh, I wanted to create an opportunity for singers who couldn't afford it or who just didn't feel that they trusted me enough to spend big money on me. And that's totally fair because there's so many singing teachers out there who claim to know the real answer. So I'm fine with that. I don't trust anyone either. So that's fine. So I decided to almost do like a membership version of my big course. It pretty much is, but it would be so different, you know, in my big Belcanto course, you get access to everything right away and you get group lessons with me. But I created a membership site where singers only paid 37 pounds a month, $48 a month. And they get lots of videos every month and PDFs. And I had this going for 12 months. I started that in May last year and I ended it in May this year because it's a lot of work for me to create new content every month and do a live Q&A every month. And not much money really compared to all the time to create a content and how little the singers were paying. But it was such an amazing experience because I gave singers who would never in their lives be able to afford the Belcanto training. They had access to learn all these crucial secrets. And they also had access to me in the live Q and A's once a month. And we had a private Facebook group. And that's my proudest achievement because I have always wanted to help other talented people who couldn't afford to take their talents to the next level because we lost everything when I was seven years old. And we went from being a normal family to being the poorest of the poor. So I had lots of talents I could never develop as a kid. We were really poor. We didn't even have an indoor bathroom or indoor toilet for many years. So there's a big part of me, it's a big place in my heart that wants to help other talented people. And also you don't really need talent either. If you really want to sing, you can become good just with technique. I've seen that many times myself. And my teacher told me that all the time. She told me about singers that had no talent. They came to her and they became professional singers with pure technique. It's more work for me. I always keep in mind that my teacher always told me that I had to have students because our technique was dying out. I didn't really believe her. 
But then I heard, I saw an interview with Maria Callas from 1968, and she talked about her singing teacher, who was the singing teacher of my teacher as well. They had the same teacher, Maria Callas and Aida. And Callas said that their teacher was maybe the last singer who was proper trained in the real bel canto. And that's when I realized that my teacher was correct when she said that our technique is dying out. And I always keep that in mind. It's very humbling and it's a great privilege. I didn't know even what the canto was when I started my training. I just knew that she's the one who's going to teach me how to sing. Pure gut feeling. I couldn't speak Italian. She only spoke Italian. <laughs> That's another story. But to be able to give those skills to singers who would otherwise not be able to afford it in many cases. Some could, of course. There were career people who saw that this is smart. I can do this for cheap. But there were singers from countries because of currencies and the and the salary level and all, they would never afford that otherwise. And I'm really happy that I could help so many singers with that. I only had about 300 followers on Instagram when I started it. And I think it was 46 of my followers who signed up, which was a very good percentage. And they went through the 12 month training and then I stopped it in May because I didn't have, I don't have the capacity to create even more content. But now all the content is there. It's a 12 month program that is so good and so affordable. So I'm thinking it's smart to make it available for other singers as well, because again, not everybody's going to be able to afford or be willing to pay for the big courses. But I'm really happy. I'm very proud of the membership. And I'm also very excited about the fact that several of the singers who started out as members then in what I call the Belcanto Singers Society, they have advanced and signed up for my Vocal Excellence program. And some are even in my Vocal Excellence Elite program where they have the big course with the one-on-one -on -one lessons. So that has been really amazing to see two of my most promising singers come from the membership group or the membership site or whatever you want to call it. So of all the things I've done, I think that's the one thing that I've been most proud of because it was something I did purely out of a heart and I didn't care what the price was at all. I always make my courses available at very reasonable prices. But that one was a very special thing for me to do. I'm very, very happy I did it and I'm probably doing it again now. So to just summarize how the last couple of years have been for me when it comes to how it is to be me behind the scenes. So I have been creating a lot of courses, which has taken months of my time. And when you create that, you cannot work when you do it during those hours during the day because you are so busy creating. So that's, you know, you're not coaching anyone during those days or you know you set aside this and this many maybe you're just working part time for weeks because you're creating a course then i have all the coaching one on one and some days that could be three or four or five lessons because they tend to cluster together with different time zones early in the morning my time somebody in hong kong my evening 10 o'clock 9 or 10 o'clock because there's morning for somebody in california or lunch time there and then I have the group lessons, usually on weekends, for singers who are in my vocal excellence program. And then I also do live Q&As for singers who were in my membership group. And in addition to that, I sp have spent a lot of time creating free reels and posts for Instagram to help singers. And that's why I wanted to create this video, to show a little bit how it is behind the scenes. And also keep in mind, I am my daughter's manager. I built up her entire career. I've been her manager for 15 years. That has been very neglected the last two years because I have been trying to help so many singers. She was the one telling me to do it, but now I want to get back to work more with her because we built up an amazing uh, career together as a team. We have recorded albums that have been charting in 26 countries, viral videos, endorsement deals, TV shows, so many things we have done together. And all of my four kids have asked me to coach them as singers. And many days I don't have time to do that because I'm working and creating so many things for others. And I also decided to return to proper performance singing again. And I was ready to do that again a year ago. And then there's been so many other things happening that I've hardly had time to sing lately myself. So when you see all of that and you know, age is not on my side. I need to actually do this before I'm old for real. So... When you look at all that, maybe it's easier to understand how busy it is and why when I started then, I learned to create viral reels in December 2023. 
up until that moment, I replied to every comment and everything that happened on my Instagram myself. But when all of a sudden you have thousands of comments, you have to start using AI to take care of the first comments. Or else you have no control, you have no life outside the, the online world. So this is a little bit of an insight into how it is behind the scenes. It's a lot of notes. It's a lot of planning. There's a lot of time being spent on preparing for everything. And, uh, you know, it's not like I'm done with a lesson and I don't think about that uh, singer anymore. So it's, uh, it's a challenge, but it's a challenge that I love. There is nothing more exciting than seeing results like Anna, who is walking on stage in two weeks. And now it's on the website, so I'm allowed to talk about it. I've been keeping this secret now for months. Two years ago, she was about to give up her dream of singing opera after being trained all her life. I thought that was horrendous to hear because she is now she is 31 and uh, she um, had pretty much given up. She had been trained so badly. She had a master's degree as an opera singer, but she couldn't really sing. She had so many issues. And now she is uh, she has made her debut at Palau de la Musica in Barcelona two months ago. She is right now in Croatia singing Belinda in Dido, but in uh, two weeks she's going to walk on stage in front of, there's a big festival in Switzerland and she's going to be on stage for four nights as the only singer standing there on the big stage with the symphony orchestra and four nights in a row and they estimate around 30,000 people the first night and the last night maybe 150,000 people. That's quite an amazing thing. And that's why I'm doing what I'm doing, to see results like that. There's no bigger compliment than somebody coming to you with their talent and ask you to be the one. They trust you to be the one helping them fulfill that potential. I think that is the only approach you can have as a coach if you want to be really good. It's not that I'm going to teach you my way of doing it and you better listen and sit down and shut up. No, they come to you and they trust you to help them develop their big passion. They're putting their time, money and trust into you. You better be ready for that and deliver the best you can. Thank you for watching. Make sure that you subscribe to my channel. Tell a friend about me and I see you in the next video.